It's the middle of May and the height of the spring harvest in Yinghao, but the coal pickers can usually make time to get the last few bits from what's supposed to be an empty coal train. Even as late as May, the weather can be very varied. But where the winter wheat has been cleared, the summer sweet corn has already been planted. this part of Hernan, it's too dry to grow much rice, so a popular breakfast is some kind of fried bread.
there's so little traffic in the street that it can be used to dry the grey. It doesn't seem to matter if it gets run over. The biggest building in town is the church, and on Sundays it's packed with worshippers. You have to come early for the best seats. Outside, the more earthly business of the weekly pig market is underway. Stone's throw from the church is the railway's unloading shed.
Ah, 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 The railway skirts the town, crosses the main road and the expressway and heads for the country. While there are many Christians in the town, this small community nearby is wholly Muslim. And at the back of the village is their small mosque.
the products of the harvest have to be sorted and dried. The grain will be bagged and the straw kept for animal feed for the winter. The train nears the summit and approaches the line's only tunnel just before Xiangyang. The original line continues to Huangmen, but this is as far as this loco will go. So it comes off to be turned. And then it's time for the lunch break.
A second loco is stationed here and will shuffle wagons down the branch to the remaining open mine at Lianghua. The wagons have to be filled, but also the loco has to be serviced. For the miners it's the end of a shift and time to get clean. It's a foul job down the pit, but the wages are far more than can be earned doing anything else in the area. <laughs>
coal tubs are brought up a separate shaft. The mine system uses a gauge of 600 millimetres. The empty tubs pass around the loop before going underground again. It's mostly done by gravity and generally works well, but accidents can happen. Not that it takes too long to fix things though. And sometimes there's the odd running repair to do before the tubs are sent back down.
As the mine is situated on the side of a hill, it's no great problem to dispose of the spoil. Quite hard work, though. Meanwhile, the coal is shifted on conveyor belts for loading onto the trains. Trains back up the hill are restricted to three or four wagons maximum. But the driver still needs to get a good start. Barely one kilometre back to Xiangyang, but it's steep, and at times it can be a bit of a struggle for the loco. shift change, the loco returns to Huang Mun for proper servicing. This mine is closed, but the railway's workshops are still here.
there's a number of old locos dumped here, reminders of more prosperous days. There's an air of dereliction about the place. Some buildings have become rather more than just unsafe. In mid-shift, the main train loco goes to Lianghua for water. Sometimes, if there's a fairly heavy load, it comes back as a double header. When sufficient wagons are assembled, a loaded train goes down to Yinghao.
this stage there was a triangle to turn the loco there, as at the top of the line. But the railway has gone downhill since, as we'll see in part two. 